Hey Record Meter viewers, welcome to a, a quick, quick brew day. Um, yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm going on vacation. I've got, uh, this is uh, the weekend before I start my, my summer vacation. And uh, we're not, uh, the wife and I are just staying, uh, staying around, uh, around Denmark and um, gonna work on some, gonna work on the brew house, gonna work on the, the house house, you know, the boring house. And um, yeah, so I wanted to uh, I wanted to brew a real quick, real just dead simple uh, pale ale to have for my uh, for my vacation, my lawn my lawnmower beer, my my laying in the sun lazing around beer. So that's what we're doing today. Check it out. I've got a look at this. We're getting all organized and stuff. I've got a I've got this this thing in here now. This IKEA pigboardy thing. Look at this, it even, oh, it even holds the lid. Come on now. Um, yeah, so here's the grain. I am, so we're pushing the, we're pushing the grain, the G40 here. We're gonna push it to, to push it to the limit, if you will. Uh, we're doing a no sparge, 30 liter finished beer. So I've actually got, <laughs> I got the sparge water, the most of the sparge water in there up to the danger zone. Um, still got the rest of the sparge water in here. We might have to just add that later. Um, I did put the full volume in, adjusted with salts, and then I, I pulled some off. We may need to pull even more off. Um, I'm not sure. But uh, right now, what we're looking at is... It is going to be an oats, oat malt pale ale. I found uh, two kilograms of uh, oat malt that I had kicking around from some plan I had for it. Uh, so this is a, a, so this is five and a half kilograms of uh, pale ale malt, two kilograms of oat malt. Here you can see, let's see, can you see in there? It's got the, those long, those long grains. Uh, and then I had a little bag of uh, Vienna malt that I threw in there. That was 900 grams of Vienna malt, and uh, yeah, that's going to be the that's going to be the pale ale. That's going to be the entire grist. Uh, pretty pretty simple. Uh, bitter and with magnum, and then I'm going to go into the uh, hop freezer and uh, whatever American or New World hops that I find that catch my eye are all going to just go in there, and then we're going to kick ferment these two guys. Uh, two guys. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hopefully end with 30 liters of beer. I'm gonna split that between two kegs. We're gonna pressure ferment these with fake Voss fake yeast. And we're gonna get them hot as hell. There's a heat wave here in Denmark. I've got my fermentation fridge set up with the heater in it. We're gonna get this over 30 degrees C. We're gonna get this. We're gonna get this fermented out in no time flat. Um, and if I'm feeling if I'm feeling frisky, we might do an experiment with the two. Uh, I'm gonna do a big big flame out. Um, I was planning on just doing um, just doing a whirlpool edition, a big whirlpool edition, and having that be the the end of it. No dry hopping, just get it out as fast as possible. But we might we might get cheeky and we might do something uh, split split batch test on these. I don't know. It'll depend on how the brew day goes, but uh, I'm gonna start uh, mashing in, and uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna run a little bit more water off because I'm, I'm starting to get nervous of how full this is. And uh, yeah, let's catch back on the other side of mashing in.
right, so we managed in, get the lid, uh, pop back on. Uh, I, all right, I'm glad that I, I'm glad that I pulled about seven, eight liters out because we are all the way up to the, uh, <laughs> the holes at the top of the, uh, the mash basket where the, um, where the handle goes. So we are gonna, I am gonna get some grain in the, uh, in the finished beer. That's kind of a bummer, but really I really wanted that 30 liter I really wanted that extra those extra those extra 10 liters so um, it's fine it'll be fine everything will be everything will be fine we'll be we're all gonna be okay uh, so yeah we are um, yeah so now we're gonna we're mashing so we're mashed in now we're at 66 my target is 65 actually uh, overshot a little bit. So we're gonna mash for, for 60 minutes at 65. Uh, the only other thing that I kind of uh, noticed was that um, some of that oat malt, I'm not sure if it cracked. I should have run it through separate on a finer on a finer crush, but I, I was, this is kind of a lazy brew day. So we're, uh, I threw it all together. I ran it through on all the same grind. It's fine. I'm actually fine with a little bit uh, less efficiency. Uh, I actually, I actually calculated for less efficiency. I'm looking for a, I'm looking for between a 5.2 and a 5.6 percent pale ale. Um, uh, beer, beer, beer father, beer smith, beer father, beer father. That's what I use now. <laughs> um, says that I'll get about six percent, six point one percent with the uh, with the malt I have, but that's also with a pretty high efficiency um, on the standard G40 profile. So we'll see. But I'll like I said, I'll be happy with. I mean, I'll be happy with all the way down to session strength. To be honest with you, this is uh, this is simply just uh, just a lawnmower beer. So we'll see. We'll see on the other side of uh, mash. I'm gonna go look at hops right now. And we'll uh, we'll see you after I pick them out. All right, quick hop update. We're gonna go with uh, we're gonna go with Idaho. Oh, all right, that that used to this says you can see it says Idaho, right? This one says Idaho Seven. We're gonna go with Idaho Seven and Strata. I have had these hops since the since the pandemic, since the first lockdown started in 2020. Uh, these these two bags came from a brewery that I reached out to and was like, "Yo, dude, I'm like straight up ordering like 30 cans of like a case of beer. Could you uh, could we could we do a hop uh, could do a hop deal too?" Uh, and they uh, they acquiesced, which was awesome. And then I I for some reason I had, I think I had already bought these like yeah these are from 2019, so these were pre. Uh, pre-pandemic but uh, let's get rid of let's get rid of all traces of the uh, pandemic hop hoarding and uh, here in beautiful post-pandemic summer we were good I, I don't know how many are in here I would say that that's probably got to be close to 100 grams in the neighborhood anyway this is probably 20 20 30 there's another 100 grams I think we're just gonna use it we're gonna use it up all of it um, I might do something wild, like one of the kegs. I might do a dip hop. I might do it. I just listened to a podcast on dip hopping, so we might we might dip our hops. Not the dip. No, we're gonna bitter with these uh, Swedish Magnum uh, hops that I got uh, because they ran out of regular Magnum at this uh, um, brew online brew shop, and they uh, substituted with the Swedish. Magnum, because I ordered German Magnum, like Magnum Magnum. So we'll uh, we'll give those a shot. All right, now we got the hops locked in. Time to get, well, still got time left in the mash, so we'll see you on the other side. Whew, it only got hotter. Look at that. It is a heat wave in Denmark. That you know, you don't get that very often. We're uh, we switched over to basically water. To, uh, to drink during brew day here. All right, um, I actually just killed the boil um, and and mostly killed the uh, exhaust fan. Have, you, have I even shown that on a brew day yet? Uh, I don't know, anyway. We're about to, we're about to, we're cooling it down. Look, 
for a 96 I got the uh, I got the uh, boiling the near boiling wort uh, going through sanitizing the the chiller right now we're looking to get down to 80 so I can do my hop stand so what did we what did we land on for hops um, Here's where, so this was, uh, this was the Magnum. This was 30 grams of, uh, of Swedish Magnum. Sorry for any, my Swedish, uh, watchers. I'm sorry for the, for the accent. Um, and then we are going with Strata and bup, 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 Idaho 7. So what we're going to do here, um, I had quite a bit of Strata uh, a little over 100 grams of strata. And then in one of the pouches, I only had about 48.2 of strata. But I have this entire other, look at that. That is some pre-Brexit Malt Miller sent to Denmark, Idaho 7. Good old 2018. We didn't even know what a pandemic was back then. Maybe just me, I don't know. Um, so what we're gonna, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do something real crazy here. We're gonna do 75 grams of strata in the in the hop stand. We're gonna do the 48 point where well I'm gonna bump it up to 50 with some of this. Maybe even 75. I don't know. I might get crazy. I might get nuts. But we're gonna do these two in the hop stand. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little bit of this 26.3 percent or 26.3 grams of strata and probably 25 to 30 ish grams of this idaho 7 and we're gonna kerplunk it down in the bottom of this keg that's sanitizing right now and then when the hop stand is done we're gonna run off some of the still hot wort into said keg and we're gonna dip pop it we're gonna do a hop tea down there we're gonna run off some like 70 degree wort in there seal it up then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cool it. I'm gonna run off into the, the other keg and then we're gonna run off into here and then we're gonna ferment them with fake. We're gonna do a dip hop, we're gonna do a side by side. Told you I might do something nuts. I don't know, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it today. Maybe it's because I've had a few of the, a few pops. I don't know, maybe. But I'm, I'm feeling an experiment today. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll see you, I'll show that, I'll sh we'll see you with the dip hop. We'll see you at the dip. Strata hops going in for the hop stand. We do a little bit for the homies. Do the rest in the spider. Oh, well, some of them are in the spider. Probably should have been looking with my real eyes, not my digital eyes on that one. Oh, well. So you may notice that something is missing. Um, I put all the hops in the uh, hop spider. Well, most of the hops in the hop spider. And then I was like doing the whole teabagging uh, thing with it. And then an alarm started going in the background and I went to turn it off and I didn't hook the hop spider back on. And now we've lost it into the depths. There's a, down, down there is a hop spider somewhere lurking beneath the depths. We shall, we shall see how that goes. Ah, oh, I can't ever have a perfect brew day. It's not possible. Okay, so this is uh, this is the fermenter that's going to do the the dip the dippage the dipping. Um, I am just going to put. So this is, um, this is twenty five grams of um, Idaho seven, just straight into the keg. And this is, I can what was it, 20, 26.8 or something of strata, also straight into the keg. Um, and it's only, it's just because the, um, we're about to dip below 70 here. So I kind of rather, kind of rather pump the word in at 70 than I would at, well, now we're at 69.5 up top. Um, yeah, so, all right, well, hang on, I'm gonna have to put you down. Well... Maybe not here. Okay, so we've got the we've got the hops in. We're just gonna run hot work.
into the cake. So this is 69, 70 degree wort that we're running in here. And basically what we're doing is we're creating a hot tea in here. I'm only gonna run, I'm gonna run like three, four liters, maybe five liters in. Um, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna just kind of um, create a hot tea and we're hopefully gonna get some some flavors out of the hops that we would we wouldn't normally get even with the hop stand a little warmer uh, but we'll see because i'm going to do the other one is not going to get this the other keg is going to be just the the same wort just pumped in cooled so all right here we go it's merging like the kraken all right rack and beer viewers welcome to well, it's a few weeks later. When did I? Was this two weeks? Two weeks later. Yeah, two weeks. Turn this beer around pretty quick, um, which is great because I, I'm on vacation right now from work, and I brewed this beer to drink during my vacation, and uh, I'm drinking it during my vacation. So it was perfect, absolutely, absolutely, perfectly um, planned. Uh, yeah. So this is the dip. This is the dip hop oat pale ale. I can't, I can't remember, um, I can't remember how much I talked about it in the actual video, um, but this is the, uh, so this is a, a pale ale recipe made with, uh, pale ale malt, uh, malted oats, uh, and a little bit of Vienna, so I think it was like, oh, it was like five, five kilos of, uh, of pale ale, two kilos of, uh, oat malt, and, uh, about a kilo of Vienna was the was the grain bill so so a pretty light grain bill it was the 30 liter batch it got split into two kegs uh i fermented in the kegs i uh, wanted to pressure ferment but um one keg had a leak in the uh, prv the uh the pressure release uh thing uh and the other one had a leak in the uh the actual gas post so neither one of them actually ever got pressure but whatever they fermented not under pressure, but they they fermented. I fermented them at about 31. Uh, they got up to about 32 degrees um, with Voss Voss cake uh, yeast. Ripped through them in. I mean, they were 80% attenuated in like 24 hours. Um, let them let them chill out uh, around that uh, at that temperature until the end of the first week. I think it was like Friday. And they were they were more than a hundred percent. They were they were they were fully fully fermented out by by uh, four days later. Then I started to just crash cool them, and I crash cooled them for about four or five days. Then I put them on gas, uh, and now we're we're drinking them. Like uh, yeah, less than two weeks later. It's about uh, this is Monday, so yeah, this is uh, fifteen days after brew day. Which I could have had it done um, earlier, but uh, I did a little bit of an extended uh, cold because I was going to serve them from the actual fermenting kegs, just for shits and giggles. But they were split. One of the um, one of the one of the kegs got a, a dip hop, so it got an extra. Um, oh crap! I haven't gone back and looked at that, but I'll I'll try and put it on screen or down in the in the bottom how much uh, extra hops it got. Um, and uh, yeah, let's take a look at them. So they, here they are. Um, totally didn't steal those glasses from a festival. I'm sorry. Um, so here, here they are. This is the dip hop one uh, in my right hand, uh, and this is the non dip hop. So this would be this went into the this went into the fermenter um, with just the big whirlpool edition. Um, cooled it to eighty. Put the whirlpool edition in then cooled it down, put it straight in the fermenter. This one got the Whirlpool edition, but uh, I had also, I ran off about three liters into the keg of about 90 degree wort, maybe 85 around that, um, and made like a hop tea inside the keg. Then I ran the rest off into it. So that's the dip hop one. Um, obviously no noticeable reel. This, this one is a bit hazier, but it's also on a different tap. Um, I've got this on my like faster pouring tap, which I think, I think is the the only reason they're a little bit different colored. 
Um, but they've got a nice orange color, chill, a little bit of chill haze. I've been yapping at you, so the, the head's kind of knocked down. But they've, they've got a nice, they've got a great head uh, retention. That's that oat malt. Let's give, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smell the, the non-dip hopped one first. Kind of a flat, vague, um, uh, pale ale-y type. Uh, not, a, not a huge hop aroma, but you can definitely, I can smell a little bit of like tangerine, a little bit of like uh, orange. Uh, I can smell some of the some of the malt, uh, maybe a little bit of kind of crackeriness, but it's it's got a nice little like very very subtle hop aroma, very subtle fruity hop aroma, um, like like fruit and orange. Now the dip hop, <laughs> that's like night and day. It's pretty crazy. It was it was much crazier when I um, um, when I first when I poured these uh, uncarbonated um, before before they were carbonated. When I just poured uh, little little samples of it, this the dip hop one was insane. It had to have been the best aroma I've ever achieved in a in a beer. Um, I actually I, I I messed up and I um, I couldn't get the the posts to lock in right. So it, uh, it like sprayed me with beer and I smelled amazing for the rest of the night. But this one, very clear hop aroma, much more of that tangerine, a good amount of, of a little bit of, there's a, there's a dankness to it. So this is Laurel and Idaho 7 hop, and I definitely get those in here. I get the Laurel has that little bit more of a kind of fruit salad, tangerine, like orange fruit salad. And the, the Idaho 7 brings a, brings a bit of dankness, a bit more, yeah, kind of, yeah, dank, dank fruitiness. It's a really clear, really good aroma on this beer. Let's give this one a try. It's good. Um, it's nice. Um, what can I say? It's a, it's a very easy drinking pale ale. Which is what I what I was brewing. That's what I that's what I got. This would be like your. I would I would. Um, th this would be like your your just very the 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 pale ale that you give to the guy who's not super into craft beer, but you know doesn't want just a a, a lager. Super straightforward. I have had a million just like this before. Um, nice mouthfeel, very crushable. It's a decent, it's a decent beer. You get a bit of the malt, you get a bit of hops. The hops aren't very, aren't very bright. They're just kind of blend in. Um, kind of like when you get with a more aged beer, um, where the hops start to fade out. Um, decent bitterness, decent bitterness level. Uh, very, very, really good pale ale. This is probably going to become like my, my go-to pale ale recipe now. Um, because I, I kind of like that. I like the very straight ahead, um, ness of it. Let's try this one now. Just like in the aroma, the hops are so much more intense here. Uh, you can put that down to the fact that there's like one and a half times more hops technically in this beer. Um, because they both got the, they both got the Whirlpool edition, but then this got another, this basically got, a, a, a dry hopping at, at, uh, you know, at flame out. Uh, so this is the, the, the dip hop. And you can even say that it probably bio transformed if you believe in that sort of thing, because the fermentation was so friggin' fast that the hops were, were super fresh in there. Um. I don't like to dry hop that much anymore. Um, I've I feel like it's a pain in the ass, um, and uh, I, I'm not going to argue that it gives. Uh, and this is clearly this is a better beer. All right, let's 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 take a step back. I get a little bit excited. My thoughts go all over the place. This is this is this is really good. This is probably the best pale ale I've ever made, like hands down, maybe one of the better 
hoppy beers I've ever made. The flavor is the flavor is very clear. The hops the hops just leap out of it. It's got a slightly firmer bitterness, which is fair because it had more hops, and also the hop tea should have actually probably drawn some more IBUs out. I like the bitterness a little bit more on this. This is more crushable. This is more like this is what you want in a pale ale. Yeah, firm, firm bitterness, nice dank hop flavor, no malt at all, uh, very light mouthfeel, but the, the hops are just so much brighter in the dip hop than in the, than in the normal. Uh, and that's, that's great because I don't like, yeah, I don't like dry hopping. I don't like opening the fermenter um, after fermentation. I don't like messing around, dumping hops in later. Um, so for a lot of my beers, that's also one of the reasons I've stopped kind of, uh, making hoppy beers and I just buy them because I'm always like, ah, I'm never going to get to the point where I can make uh, a hoppy beer that tastes as good, not without investing in some even more crazy equipment, like clothes transfer stuff. Um, I also feel like when I dry hop and when I make a dry hop beer, the, the beers go, um, they go up, off a bit quicker. Uh, so, but this, this is, this is exactly what I want to drink, super hoppy beer. And I made it without, without as much, without dry hopping, without having to open the, it's, it's really cool. Um, I would like to try, I would like to try it. Um, I would like to try it like with the, with this one, with a dry hop and see if they can become like the same beer but but otherwise i mean this was so much easier than dry hopping too because i just put the i just put the hops in the cake uh i got the work down to still hot but not like boiling put it in with as a hop tea then i chilled it down as normal and then i put the the beer on top of it less muss less fuss um didn't have to open the fermenter up let it just ferment straight out um Maybe it's gonna get maybe it's gonna get weird as it sits. I don't think it's gonna last long enough, but it, maybe it'll get weird as it sits on those um, hops. I was gonna transfer it to another keg, but my jumper thing um, got all messed up. That's a whole nother story. So I'm I'm just basically serving it out of the fermentation keg because I want to drink it fast. Um, but yeah, this 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 method has has possibilities. I'm gonna look into this some more. I don't know. Let me know. Anybody else tried uh, dip popping? If so, let me know if I'm I'm crazy or not. Uh, but uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys go. And uh, yeah, these these are great. This is this is lawnmower, and this is just oh happy deliciousness. So check it out. Check out the recipe. Uh, like subscribe. Smash uh, beers. Smash beers. Later.